Okay, can we agree that the title Gunpowder Milkshake is absolutely ridiculous? Still, as weird as the title to this film sounds, it was enough to make me intrigued at what sort of movie this would be. And with the recent trailer, I'm completely hooked on this project. This is the kind of over-the-top action flick that we need, that I need personally, because it has some of the most widely entertaining talent to assemble for an action movie. The all-female cast will have your attention. As they popped up in the trailer, I was impressed with who they managed to cast for this project. So what is this film about? Let's get into it. Here's my summary. This film centers around Sam, a high-ranking assassin working for the firm. A crime syndicate responsible for raising her after her mother vanishes without a trace. Sam is following in her mother Scarlett's footsteps as an assassin. And when she takes on a fateful job, she's put in a situation where she has no choice but to go against the wishes of her superiors. Sam chooses to save Emily, an innocent 8-year-old girl, caught up in a bad situation. But in doing so, it puts out odds with the firm who withdraws their protection of her, leaving Sam to be a target for a number of deadly forces, including assassins from the syndicate. Sam has no choice but to seek out her mother and rely on a trio of female killers, known as the Liberians. Together, this group of women might just have a chance at taking on every force that's set on taking them out, permanently. Okay, with that out of the way, Let's get into the cast. We have Karen Gillan in a lead role and the Scottish actress playing a badass assassin wasn't something I was surprised by. She's done enough kick-ass action scenes in her previous roles for me to believe that she would be a convincing action star. Gillan has always had a spunkiness to her ever since the Doctor Who days as companion Amy Pond. Something which carried on to her next major role as Ruby Roundhouse in the recent Jumanji films. I think it was around the time she played Nebula, who was a fierce combatant. I saw her in a new light. I enjoy the energy she put into that character, and it's something that continues here as she steps into this new role. Here she plays Sam, an assassin who is efficient at what she does, and loyal to the firm who raised her into the killing machine she is today. Karen Gillan really sells the ferociousness of the character and a much softer side to her when she's not focused on killing. Already, I'm invested in the character who shows a tremendous amount of compassion and has what could be an iconic fashion choice. The bowling jacket that she's wearing is a simple yet striking look to sport. From the trailer, it looks like Sam has a love for the game. From a close to one scene where she's at a bowling alley, well, not exactly bowling, but definitely using her bowling ball to great effect. Chloe Coleman plays Emily, the 8-year-old girl who is the catalyst for this story shifting gears. They don't really shed much light as to why she's an important target, but I imagine it's the same as with most films, where kids are a major asset being hunted down or kidnapped. She's linked to someone important. It should be interesting to see Coleman in a more serious film, after her last role alongside Dave Batista in My Spy, which was my first exposure to the child actor, who was likable in the comedy film. The actress is the youngest cast member, but that doesn't stop her from keeping up with her adult peers. It helps they are playing into her innocence and having her be at the center of the comedy we see in the trailer. I like the adopted daughter dynamic they are setting up with her and Sam, who becomes a protector. Next up, we have Lena Headey as Scarlet, Sam's estranged mother. We know that Lena Headey is a badass, not just as Cersei on Game of Thrones, where she played one of the best villains on the show, but also her role as Sarah Connor in the short-lived Terminator, The Sarah Connor Chronicles, is what cemented her as an action star for me. It's probably going to be hard for Sam to see her as a hero after only just wrapping up her role on Game of Thrones, which will still loom over anything she does in the future. To me, I wouldn't find it distracting, as I've seen her in enough projects outside of Thrones to be able to separate her from her Cersei character. 
It should be interesting to see her dynamic with Karen Gillan, who plays her daughter. Already they're setting up a complex relationship between the two and the syndicate. It seems like a character Scarlet will be MIA for the first half of the movie, since they mention her being absent for 15 years. We see them working together quite well, but I imagine there's some long harboring feelings towards her mother for abandoning her for years, which throughout the film, they'll have to work out. I know I took a slight jab at the film's title, Gunpowder Milkshake, in the intro, but I've since come to love it because it seems to have a deeper meaning. We see Scarlett and a young Sam enjoying a milkshake together in a diner, a location that pops up a few times in the trailer. So the milkshake is probably her favorite dessert that is special to her and her mother. That feeds into the milkshake part of the title. On the gunpowder bit? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? This film will have plenty of guns blazing, but more on that later. One of the main selling points of this movie is undoubtedly the cast, and they have assembled a wonderful bunch. We have a very diverse cast here, with the three women who will ally themselves with Sam. Just seeing them in the trailer together and on their own, you want to root for these ladies. Angela Bassett is part of this project and the Black Panther actress really is a tremendous talent to have in this movie, which is allowing her to have fun. I couldn't be more excited to see Angela Bassett kicking ass and firing off rounds in this trailer. It reminded me of one of the star's earlier roles in the 1995 Catherine Bigelow film, Strange Days, where she played Lonette Mason, aka Mace, a bodyguard and limousine driver. For me, that was one of a few roles where she got to act but also was involved in the action. There's so many great scenes of her letting loose and it's wonderful to witness. I think the older that Angela Bassett has become, she has grown into this presence that just exudes beauty and a strength, even more so than before, in her earlier years as a talent. So seeing her play a veteran killer is probably one of the best roles you can have her take on. Her character anime looks like another wonderful role for the actress to settle into and leave an impression. Michelle Yeoh is perhaps one of the biggest additions to this cast for me. Not just for her star power, but her history as an action star. She's a legend, especially when it comes to her vast work in martial arts films. Who hasn't seen Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Recently, the actress has been a series regular on Star Trek Discovery as Captain Philippa Giorgio, a wonderful role for the actress, who is a standout on the show. It's why they are even planning a spin-off centered around her character. Here she plays Florence, one of the three librarians in charge of the library, a front that is actually an armory, where they dispense slash loan weapons to assassins like Sam. I love how Florence and her colleagues are recommending their personal choices to Sam, like a good book being recommended to an avid reader. Yo and her fellow co-stars play into the whole generational theme that is present in this story. Before we move on, I just love the fact that guns are being kept in a library and in hollowed out books. To me, that's a nice little idea. I feel like Carla Gugino has disappeared from the spotlight even though she's been around doing other projects. I remember her as Ingrid Cortez in the Spy Kids movies where she played a spy mom alongside Antonio Banderas. Since then, she has starred in the Mike Flanagan Netflix series, The Hunting of Hill House, where she delivered a great performance as the matriarch of the central family on the show. That was more of a dramatic role, and not something that required much action. I'm happy to see her go back to doing an action-heavy role. Already, Gugino seems to be flexing her comedy muscles by being a bit more light-hearted than her fellow co-stars. That gag with the books was great. Here she plays Madeline, another sisterhood member who has one of the best bits in the trailer when she shushes Emily and tells her, I'm gonna make a little noise. That Gatling gun slash minigun she pulls out of the van and starts firing is the cherry on top of the milkshake for me. Just tasty. I mean, just amazing to witness. It was at that point that I was on board even more with her character and became a fan. Well, not just her, but the whole cast of ladies who make up this ensemble of kick-ass women. 
Now I love seeing Paul Giamatti. He's great at comedy. And when it comes to drama, he's an even better actor. Recently I've tuned into Billions on Showtime and the actor is a powerhouse in the show. I'm happy to see him here as part of this mostly female ensemble. As one of the few male characters we see in this trailer, they picked a cracker of an actor to join the cast and play the antagonist. From the trailer, it doesn't look like he'll be relying on his usual over-the-top antics to play his character, which is good. It makes us take him seriously as one of the threats to our heroes. Here he plays Nathan, a crime lord attached to the firm. It's unclear if he's the head of the organization or just a high-ranking member. My guess for now is the latter. This film is directed by Israeli filmmaker Navat Papashudo, who has mostly worked on horror movies for his career. The director has co-directed a few feature films like 2010's Rabies, 2013's Big Bad Wolves, and contributed a segment for the ABCs of Death 2. This will be his first film where he's the sole director at the helm and not a co-director where he shared part of the responsibility in shaping and filming the movies he's done previously. Also, this will mark the director's first English language film. Pap Shudo helped script the film along with screenwriter Eud Lavsky, who is known for his comic book series Midnight Radio. This film is centered on an organization of assassins, which will easily make people think of the John Wick movies, starring Keanu Reeves. So, is it a female John Wick? Nope. They already did that, with Charlize Theron in Atomic Blonde. This doesn't seem to be copying that formula. It is, however, influenced by Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. Except, it's not a revenge story. At its core, this is a story about motherhood. It's action pack, sprinkled with a bit of humor, so it's not too dark despite the level of violence we see play out. I really love the tone of this trailer and the film it sets up is stylized. The fight choreography looks crisp. There's going to be a barrage of gunplay throughout the film, but it won't just be massive shootouts. We see a number of hand-to-hand -hand and close quarters combat between our lead and her adversaries. One of the things I'm excited by is the fact they're going to have the actors involved in their own stunt work which is always a plus. It means far less cuts to hide the fact that they are being swapped out with a stunt person. Not that I expect them to do all their stunts, since there are limits to what an actor can do for certain action scenes, but it's nice seeing actors making that extra effort to play their part. It should be fun seeing the ladies in this cast have their moments to shine in whatever action scenes they're given to do. There's not a single cast member who won't jump at the chance to perform some of their own stunt work since they've had experience on other films that involve action it would prepare them along with the training that the actors would have to go through leading up to filming we get teased at a couple of prominent action scenes in a number of distinctive locations a bowling alley where karen gillan is taking on a number of armed goons the library where she meets up with her mother's associates it looks like it will be compromised as her enemies close in on their location, forcing them to take a stand. A diner, most likely the one where she frequently visits, as a meeting point to enjoy her favorite milkshake. Seeing all the ladies dressed up as gun-toting waitresses in a slow-motion action sequence? What's not to love about that? Finally, a scene that looks like a sea life exhibition. We see Angela Bassett hammering some people. Literally, since she's dual wielding hammers. Okay, we can't talk about this trailer without getting into the soundtrack, which perfectly sets the tone and gets you hyped for this movie. We have two tracks featured here. First up, there's Bar to the Bone by Soundbreakers. The female vocalist on this track is killing it. This seems to be an original track composed for the film. Next up is Al J, who never disappoints. Their single In Cold Blood, Bauer Remix is the final track to be included in this trailer. People will instantly recognize this song from the Extraction trailer. Here, it isn't as prominent as it was in that trailer, since they only use it briefly. 
I find it interesting that even before they show this first trailer, or the film has been released globally, they already made a huge announcement about this property. It's going to be a franchise. A sequel is already in the works and it makes sense. If this is anything like John Wick, in the sense that it will lean into a lot of world building, then they could start to lay the groundwork for the world of assassins, explaining the rules and the structure of the syndicate that runs the criminal underworld. Maybe there are factions or other criminal organizations that will come into play. That could be a future threat for Sam and her team. This has the potential to be a big hit with audiences. It's a female-centric action movie, something which we haven't seen in a while, or much of in the film landscape. So, this will be a welcome addition to the action genre. Gunpowder Milkshake is set to premiere on Netflix on the 14th of July, and internationally in cinemas on the 21st of July. I'm definitely going to catch this in the cinema when it comes out here in the UK. So, after this trailer, are you stoked as I am to see Gunpowder Milkshake? What do you think about the trailer and the cast they have assembled? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways folks, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the show. Please feel free to subscribe, like and comment below. And hey, maybe this wasn't your cup of tea. And that's okay. Just remember to take care and stay safe.